In silence, the contract was signed. No public parade. No flashy launch ceremony. But with a single signature in late 2025, the Philippine Navy quietly crossed a line it had never crossed before. These are not just two new frigates. They are the continuation of a pattern. A doctrine. One that proves the Philippines never buys the standard version. From Jose Rizal. To Miguel Malvar. And now to the latest HDF. 3200 contract. Every Korean warship Manila has acquired has emerged stronger, heavier, and more capable than the baseline design. The real question is not what was bought, but what this frigate could still become. If that logic holds, the latest frigates may represent a transitional hybrid. HDF 3200 in displacement. HDF, 3500 in combat power. A ship that quietly bridges the gap between today's frigate fleet and tomorrow's larger surface combatants. Because history shows one thing clearly. The Philippine Navy always upgrades. And this time, the upgrade may quietly redefine the balance of power at sea. Stay with us until the end. Before we continue our discussion, don't forget to like button, subscribe, and the notification bell button from Pinoy Guard. Welcome back to Pinoy Guard. In December 2025, the Philippine Department of National Defense signed a contract with HD Hyundai Heavy Industries of South Korea for two new frigates, based on the HDF-3200 design. On paper, this appears straightforward. Two ships. A known shipbuilder. A familiar design lineage. But strategically, this contract represents something far more important. This acquisition falls under the Frigate Second Acquisition Program, a core component of the Armed Forces of the Philippines' Horizon 3 modernization phase. The phase focused not on replacement, but on credible deterrence and forward naval presence. The HDF-3200 is not a patrol ship. It is not a corvette. It is a true multi-role frigate intended to operate in contested waters, integrate with allies, and survive in high-threat maritime environments. Yet here is where the analysis becomes critical. The Philippines did not simply select a ship. It selected a design family, one it has already modified before. To understand what comes next, we must look backward. Every major Philippine Navy surface combatant procured from South Korea follows the same pattern. Baseline design Philippine-specific upgrade expanded capability. Jose Rizal class, the first upgrade. The Jose Rizal class frigates were derived from a Korean design, but they were not identical to the Korean Navy's standard configuration. They were modified for Philippine operational needs, tropical conditions, and future growth potential. While often criticized early on, these ships marked a decisive break from legacy thinking, and, more importantly, established a working relationship between Manila and Korean shipbuilders. Miguel Malvar class, proof of evolution. The next step was even more revealing. The Miguel Malvar class frigates, 
though still within the same general design lineage, arrived with. Improved sensors. More robust combat system integration. Expanded weapon growth margins. These ships were not repeats. They were evolutions. The Philippine Navy did not reset to a standard export model. It moved upward. This is the crucial historical lesson. Now let us be precise. When analysts talk about a 3,200-ton hull carrying 3,500-class combat power, they are not talking about exaggeration. They are talking about system selection. 1. Vertical launch system, the core of the upgrade. The most decisive difference between a baseline frigate and a high-end one is the vertical launch system, or VLS. A standard HDF 3200 configuration can support a modest VLS fit. But a reinforced and upgraded variant could realistically carry. A larger VLS cell count approaching HDF 3500 levels. Medium to long range surface to air missiles. Quad-packed interceptors for layered air defense. Advantages. Simultaneous engagement of aircraft, drones, and cruise missiles. True fleet air defense contribution, not just self-defense. Better survivability in saturation attacks. This alone transforms the frigate from a patrol combatant into a force multiplier. 2. Anti-ship missiles reach matters. A baseline frigate typically carries limited anti-ship missile capability. An upgraded configuration can support long-range, sea-skimming anti-ship missiles Improved mid-course guidance via data link. Cooperative targeting with aircraft and other ships. Advantages. Strikes beyond the enemy's visual and radar horizon. Deterrence against larger surface combatants. Ability to deny sea space without direct confrontation. In practical terms, this allows a smaller frigate to threaten ships far larger than itself. 3. Main Gun Plus Close-In Weapon Systems The hull size does not limit lethality here. Integration does. An upgraded HDF, 3200 can carry. A modern 76mm or larger naval gun with guided ammunition. Advanced CIWS or RAM-type point defense systems. Advantages. Layered defense against missiles and drones. Credible naval gunfire support for literal operations. Last-ditch survivability in high-threat environments. This ensures the ship remains effective, even after missile expenditure. 4. Radar systems, where 3,500 class power really shows. Sensors define what a warship can see, and therefore what it can fight. A 3,200 ton hull with upgraded power and cooling margins can host multifunction ASA radar comparable to larger frigates. 
longer detection ranges for air and surface targets, simultaneous tracking of dozens of contacts, advantages, earlier warning against incoming threats, better missile queuing and fire control, improved performance in cluttered maritime environments, this is where displacement becomes secondary. If the radar sees farther, the ship fights earlier. 5. Electronic Warfare, the Quiet Force Multiplier Electronic warfare rarely makes headlines, but it decides survivability. An upgraded frigate may include Modern Electronic Support Measures ESM. Active Jamming and Deception Systems Integrated Decoy Launchers Advantages Reduced Probability of Being Targeted Disruption of Enemy Missile Guidance Increased Survivability Without Firing a Shot this is especially critical in contested waters, where missile threats are persistent. 6. Sonar and Anti-Submarine Warfare Displacement alone does not determine ASW capability. With proper design, an HDF-3200 hull can integrate. Bow-mounted sonar Towed Array Sonar Systems Full Compatibility with ASW Helicopters Advantages Detection of Submarines at Extended Ranges Protection of Sea Lines of Communication Credible Escort Capability for High Value Units This allows the frigate to operate as part of a task group not merely as an independent patrol ship.